2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So now let's go ahead and start our class. So you are able to hear me, right? No audio issues, right? Okay, cool. Fine. So, if you remember, yesterday we had discussed about this example, right? So, let me read it again, so so that it will be an <coughs> uh, one more time review for us. So, the example is you are managing a thousand node cluster, and your company you works on sending an SMS for a campaign. So in your Hadoop cluster you have all the mobile customers list and also you have the list of SMSs that needs to be sent to each of the person. Okay so now now we have a rule saying that if a subscriber has opted for a do not disturb mode and if that's the case that person shouldn't get an SMS. So he should be avoided from the list to whom we are going to send the messages so the basically uh, the requirement is like the DND list is going to be updated very frequently maybe for every day or maybe for every two days the DND list is going to be updated in the sense whenever we have new customers opted for this particular mode the list gets updated so my question is how do I make sure that I give this lookup data to all my thousand machines before every new run of my MapReduce program. So in the sense uh, all this new lookup data should be available to my program before the execution starts. So any ideas that you have come up for today? So yesterday I think Mm -hmm. Rahul is saying that I would create a custom combiner to filter out DND numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. This is, of course, a valid version, but don't you see any glitch in this method? So are you going to write a new program every day? So yeah of course partitioner is going to separate you but are you going to because your DND list is going to be changed every day right? So are you going to write a new custom combiner daily? So don't you feel that it's a hectic work for you? Yeah, good. So any other options? Okay, of course this is a valid option, but we are looking for much more easier way. That's it. Because it is like an overhead for a developer. Because the requirement is same, the functionality is same, only the files are changing that's it right so for each of the changed file it's not a good choice to write a program again isn't it or data sources stored in RDBMS it can be on anywhere Rahul. Imagine that it's on anywhere. 
मे बी आर डी एम एस मे बी सम लॉग्स फाइल्स और मे बी सम टेक्स्ट फाइल्स मे बी यू कनेक्ट टू ऑरकल सर्वर वॉट एवर दैट्स नॉट एन इश्यू so okay i will give you an option and tell me if it is feasible okay mm -hmm. if they are then we can do inner join on customer and dnd table and use scoop so how would you write your inner join here for the customer and dnd table how you are going to write it okay for uh, by using scoop you will move the data to hdfs okay uh, uh, i will come to that point also fine but how you are going to write your inner join on customers and dnd because this dnd is uh, like dynamic right fine you are by using scoop okay let me paste this also one more answer but good that you are trying i'm happy for that and use scoop to move to hdfs right so fine yeah and one more thing uh, yeah i'm coming to that point also rahul just a second okay thousand right this is what your point is right loading the data to hdfs and you are asking all your 100 machines in your cluster to access that file in order to run your map reduce program right okay so here again we have few glitches okay the first one is for every sms all 1000 machines will look up to a machine where this particular data is stored or may be located uh rahul can you unmute yourself and tell me Uh, I had unmuted you. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Tell me, Rahul. Yeah. So what I was saying was, uh, so we have customer list, right? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, we have a customer list, and then we have a, a DND list. Right. 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 So customer list is uh, does not change very often. Definitely. The the DND list can change, right? Right. It is dynamic, right? so so what i was thinking was maybe if we have so let's say these files are generated on a file system somewhere local file system mm -hmm. we use a maybe a, a sql job to load okay. it into rdbms once okay. it's there mm -hmm. we filter out we do a inner join and get all the non dnd numbers mm -hmm. from the main table mm -hmm. once we have that can't we use scoop to get the uh, Uh, get the final result into hdfs right right i mean definitely this is an have, option yeah right right so so that way uh, the thousand nodes will not have to check against any anything fine all the okay work is already being uh, done in you want RDFS. to do everything in the sense you want to do all the calculations before it has moved to hdfs right exactly 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 but still don't you think that this job is a regular job i mean you have to refresh in the sense you have to do that work again right 
I mean, yeah, you have to do it somewhere. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, I think that the if you if you use one machine, one server to do it, is better than if you have you know thousand machines. Yeah, but the requirement so is know, very huge. Network. Yeah, yeah. But what's yeah. the issue is like, uh, it's a very huge data I am dealing about, and it definitely needs at least thousand machines to run this or to do this job. Okay. Because I mean, all these examples which we are seeing is for a very simple or very tiny amount of data, right? But that's not the case with the actual production data. Because Hadoop, right. if you yeah, Hadoop, if you think about the production data, it will be very huge, which you can't even imagine, right? Right. Yeah. So definitely, this is a good option, but I mean, it's a hectic work, of course. And another option I can tell you is, you can store first of all whatever the uh, information that you are going to get in your DND text file and load it into HDFS. But still, again, it has few other problems. So whenever you copy it to your HDFS, all your remaining machines has to access these particular blocks. In the sense, all your thousand machines or maybe uh, 999 machines should go and talk to one single machine to get all this data and process their particular tasks on their machines. So again, it's a very huge network traffic that is going to be created. Or maybe one more option is every time you run a program and you need to delete this previous uh, whatever the dynamic file that was created and run the program again with your new text file that is going to be updated by tomorrow. That is also one other option, but again, that is also an another glitch. And the last option, if you think, we can say like uh, bundle our lookup file with a jar file, right? Even that is also good. But still, again, I have to create my jar file every day. Even I don't want to do that also. So whatever you are thinking that the functionality needs to happen before it goes to MapReduce program. That is very good and really good. That's the best option. But the simplest functionality rather than doing an inner join is with distributed cache. So what I will do in this distributed cache is ask my developer or maybe admin also to write a script that before my program is going to be submitted a lookup file will be pass it to all your machines on your cluster. Okay, so what I am doing is before my actual execution starts, I want to send a sample file, not a sample file, whatever the dynamic file that was created to all your machines on the cluster. Suppose you have 10,000 machines on your cluster. No problem and no worries. You just will pass it on this lookup file to your cluster on all the machines. That's it. And after your program is finished, this completed maybe, he uh, probably admin will delete this file from all thousand nodes or machines. So don't you think this is a good option? So that is what Hadoop provides right now. Hadoop provides you a new feature called as distributed cache which exactly implements this. Okay, so 
let's take like mm, okay let me draw a diagram for you a habit cluster it's a very very big and huge cluster imagine and I have missions of different sizes if you remember my cluster will not contain all the missions of same configuration right it will have different types of configuration so I'm giving you in different sizes okay in the sense it is able to manage or hold that amount of data okay so I have these many missions so maybe probably I had drawn nine missions of different sizes here okay and my actual files are campaign dot text and subscribers right dot text so these are my two actual files which are not going to be changed very frequently but there is one more file very bad file which is going to be changed dynamically right maybe every day or something like that so now what I will do is I will give my dnd dot text file as an input to my cluster so this dnd.txt file will sit on my local file system but not on HDFS because why I should take the uh, problem of getting the replication my uh, job tracker or whatever my task tracker going that and getting it from the HDFS perform it why I don't need all that rigorous process it's as simple as that I can just store it this dnd.txt file on my local system and my Mr. Job Tracker will take care of it of sending it to my cluster so the job tracker will take care that dnd.txt file is available locally remember this not on HDFS and all the machines will access it once the actual program is submitted and admin will arrange that this file will be automatically deleted from the local system as well So good is it fine so now what I will do is my actual SMS so for my program I will create as usually some jar file whatever the program I'm going to write for that I'm going to create my jar file and now once my actual program whatever my mapper class reducer class and driver class is bundled into a single jar file and I submit the program my dnd dot text file will be moved to my cluster so this file actually sits on my local file system and once the program is submitted it will automatically copied to 
all my machines so not only on this but on all my machines wherever my job is going to run okay let it be so that's what the actual functionality behind it so whatever the campaign.txt file and subscriber.file these are our actual files and these files are going to be set on my actual hdfs but this dnd.txt file is going to be set on my local file system and this is going to be traveled from my client system to cluster systems whenever the job is submitted so is it clear for you so for example if i want to add a zip file i can do it by setting some uh, command or maybe uh, even i can do it as a uh, adding a jar file from a third party library or something like that also so the, those are called as lib jars so i will just add those jars also into my program and that's it i will be ready to execute the program so how i will write my mapreduce program is Uh, for every two days let me take a sample example okay for every two days uh, or else sorry guys hold on let me take the word count example itself okay it will be much more easier for you to understand because that's what the example we have been followed till now right so let me take the same example also mm, okay for every two days I may have a different stop word file. So this is the dynamic file which is going to be changed. Dynamic file which is going to be changed very very frequently. Okay and when I am doing my word count I don't want to count few particular words okay so whenever a particular word suppose my stop file dot text contains hi how or you okay this is what my content in stop file and the actual file whatever i am reading may be the campaign file or the subscriber.txt file in the older example can be of my any input file this is my actual input file and it contains hi how are you how are you being okay mm, where are you being till now till now Sh shall we go for a movie okay whatever some contents so this is what my actual data is so now my requirement is whenever I come across hi how and or and you in my stop file whatever I had written my word count program shouldn't stop but it just needs to skip these words whenever it encounters that's it so first of all my program starts reading from here right if at all this top file is not there my actual program runs like hi comma one how comma one or comma one you comma one where comma one and so on right this is what actually happens in my word prone program if you remember you till no and so on right this is what my actual word count program will emits but now whenever you are giving this stop file as input my output would look like that's it all those four key value pairs will not be generated 
that's it in the sense i am filtering them and just throwing away what my math function will do is first of all i will read this stop word dot file i mean uh, stop word right okay first i will read this stop word dot file and keep it in an array so i will just give this file as input which is stored on my local file system remember that i am just giving it as so my path would be as home in my actual ubuntu it it could be like this home geeta somewhere and then stop file dot txt this would be my path i would be giving in my mapper class and first i will read all the values in stop word dot txt to an array so i will store it in a array and whenever the actual word counting starts in the sense whenever my word length is greater than 0 and and is not equal to array value emit the key value pair else skip it that's it that is what i would write in my mapper program and all the remaining functionality will be the same in the sense the reducer will stay as it is and the driver will stay as it is just i will read it through my mapper program and i will write this condition that's it so do i need to change this program every time no right only the thing that is going to be changed is stop file and this stop file is going to be <coughs> provided by my admin and he will take care of copying it to my hdfs whenever only the program is submitted and once this program is finished it will this stop file dot txt file will be removed from my cluster so once i rem uh, the program is finished this text file is deleted this text file is deleted this text file is deleted and so on so that's what the functionality behind distributed cache so are you fine with this and also remember that okay i want to add one more point yeah of course you can do many other uh, wonders using distributed cache not only on filtering i had just given you one simple filtering example wherever you find some data that is going to be changed dynamically and you want to do some uh, logic or you want to do some process on it there you can use your distributed cache the only thing behind distributed cache is changing of data dynamically that's it so this is a very good functionality that was introduced in hadoop and people are really really earning money like anything using this okay and one more thing if you remember uh, whatever the input file that is given to our hdfs first of all the input file will be divided into blocks right so suppose your campaign.txt file uh is something of about 300 kb and if that's the case i would have around four blocks right and those four blocks first of all will be copied to different machines maybe to these four machines then 
वंस माई प्रोग्राम इज सबमिट हेड माई जॉब ट्रैकर विल अवेयर दैट ओके दिस पर्टिक्युलर फाइल इज गोइंग टू वर्क ऑन दिस कैंपेन डॉट टेक्स्ट देन फाइन आई डोंट नीड टू कॉपी एवरीथिंग ऑन माई क्लस्टर ऑल्सो वेर एवर दिस कैंपेन डॉट टेक्स्ट फाइल इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सिक्यूटेड माई जॉब इज एन एफ टू कॉपी दिस डी एन ई टेक्स डॉट टेक्स्ट फाइल टू ओनली दोज फोर मेशन That's it. He'll copy to these machines. And as usual and as regular, it is going to be this campaign dot txt is going to be replicated thrice, right? So it may be here, and the same data might get replicated here as well. Hmm. Why it's not moving? here and maybe one more mission it's not going to run on all the machines right it is going to be run on only the actual definitive copy so this dnd.txt file will not be copied on all to the replica also only to one task tracker it will be copied and if at all this job is very busy or maybe of any other reasons it's not able to run means then only this dnd.txt file will be copied to another machine where it's going to be executed so as the same way that we run our programs the distributed cache program can also run as hadoop jar jar name and here i am going to give my input files so suppose maybe stop words dot txt and comma it's not only one single file i can give hundreds of files here comma maybe uh, filter dot text file comma abc dot text file and now my actual input path that is the campaign dot txt file dot path and my output file path so this is how we are going to run our program uh we can use this functionality in hive and pig also or just java map reduce program so uh i think we can use it only in our map reduce program it's not the option given to hive and pig okay so mm. okay i will tell you one last example i hope you will be very clear after this if that's not the case just let me know okay sorry this is my huge cluster and i'm having six machines here okay fine and i have different areas with different zip codes okay each machine is holding the data of each of the zip codes maybe this machine is holding the data of zip codes from 000 to 
1000 so whatever zip codes that come under this will be stored on this machine and just it's a sample random value I'm giving so don't confuse and this guy will contain from thousand one to two thousand and now this guy contains from three thousand thousand one to four thousand this is what my data is and now I have a question like tell me the population mm, that tell, tell me the population of zip codes containing from mm, 5500 to 5750 this is what my requirement is I, uh, okay and what I will do is I will just copy this whatever the lookup file that I am going to get only to text file this lookup dot text file will be copied bah. ok this lookup file will be copied only to this machine and this will be taken care of my job tracker so to which machine that needs to be copied would be taken care of my, my my job tracker that's it so the job tracker will see that as per my input data seems that only one single machine that is the six machines need the copy and it just does it before the program actual program execution starts that's it I would be just giving this or I would be just storing this lookup.txt file on my local file system and I will give this path in my MapReduce program that's it so that is what my MapRed uh, where is this view slideshow slide okay so a common requirement for a mapper or reducer is to need of accessing some site data so whatever the lookup files that we are going to be created or the dynamic files were called as site data that's it so the site data can be of anything maybe lookup tables itself the table is dumped up as a text file or maybe I can uh, as Rahul is saying as it it can be of any server as well I will just connect to that server and I will give the path that's it so it can be of any kind lookup tables dictionaries etc one option is read directly from HDFS in the configuration method so instead of giving the input file in my command Hadoop jar I will copy it to my HDFS and I will uh, create the configurations such that it can uh, get in touch with my catchy but that is not a good option okay because copying it to HDFS getting that replicated and deleting it manually it's all of 
hectic work and we don't need it the, we just need the simplest way and the simplest way is the process which we had discussed okay distributed cache provides an api to push data to all slave nodes transfer happens behind the scenes before any task is executed so before i submit the job and it gets started executing on the actual cluster this file would be copied and distributed cache is read only i cannot update this file uh i will open this i cannot update this dnd.txt file once my program is submitted it is just a read only file if at all i want to change it change it on your local machine and submit it that's it i cannot do it uh, internally once it is submitted to my once my program is submitted that's it. okay and files in the distributed cache are automatically deleted from slave nodes whenever the job is finished so that's what the beauty that the admin is going to be taking care if you are using tool runner you can add files to the distributed path directly from the command line when you run the job the first thing is the advantage is i don't need it to copy to my hdfs at all i can directly access it through my command line using the statement as hadoop jar jar name and give the file names as file1 file2 and so on and so forth and after that followed by your input file and output file also the archive flags add archive files and automatically unarchives them on the destination machines like as i told you i can add even the zip folders as well in the path of my hdfs files internally this zipped folder will be get unzipped and it will be copied to on my all my destination machines and the another option is just adding the jars of some other programs executed somewhere and just taking those inputs also so we have diff different options in distributed cache so files added to the distributed cache are made available in your tasks local working directory so once it is copied it's like once it is copied to your task tracker it's like a local file for it right it don't need to go to another machine and also it doesn't need to get the data so for my task tracker it's just the local data that's it access them from your mapper or reducer the way you would read any ordinary local file so i would declare it as object file is equal to something like this mm. object file equal to new file of my file name whatever that's it this is the only extra step i'm going to write on my map reduce program so all good can we go ahead super what man it has to be copied why it's not copying sometimes am i dragging it wrongly ah good and let's proceed with the next topic which is federation and high availability Infosys provides world class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K Infosys how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training 
hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.